All right, 3.3 now, graphing and solving systems of linear inequalities. Okay, so we were just solving linear systems um, of equations, and we did it graphing in 3.1, then we did it algebraically in 3.2. Well, now we're kind of going back to um, graphing here for inequalities, but we still get answers for systems of linear inequalities as well. So, systems of linear inequalities, they are simply just two lines that cross, and you need to shade in only the common areas. You remember back in chapter two when we were graphing um, inequalities, um, and we shaded below or above the line, and um, we shaded towards the point. Like I said, if it's true, you shade towards. Remember all that? We're doing that again, except now we're only going to shade the areas that are in common. Those are the areas that we're shading, the areas that are in common. Be safe for your purchases and get out and come again. So, graphing systems of linear inequalities. To do that, you graph the line that corresponds to the inequality. And remember, this is stuff from chapter 2 again. If it's a less than or greater than sign, it is a dashed line. And if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it is a solid line. Um, then you lightly shade both graphs, right? So, you just graph the first line, you shade it. You graph the second line, you shade it. Wherever the two graphs overlap, that is your answer. Okay? That's the answer that you're looking for, wherever they overlap. Oh, a graduate student, huh? How come you guys can go to the moon, but you can't make my shoes smell good? So with this one, let's try to graph this, just the first one here. This y-intercept is negative 1, which means I plot a point there at negative 1. And the slope is negative 3, which means it's down 3, right 1 down 3 right 1 and because it's less than or equal or sorry because it's greater than or equal to I have a solid line so I pick a point not in the line and I pick a point that's 0 0 it's not on the line right I plug it in and when I plug that in I end up getting 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1 is that true you got it. So instead of me shading this, I have these mini little arrows here. That's just telling you what direction I should be shading. I would shade everything over there. Next up, I graph this one. So the y-intercept is at positive 2. And I go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. But because it's less than, it's a dashed line. So that's supposed to be a dashed line there, not a solid line. That's supposed to be a dashed line, so keep that in mind. And um, what we want to do next is shade. So I'm going to pick a point not in that line, which is 0, 0. So is 0 less than 2? That's true. So I shade towards the point. So notice how I'm drawing the lines down here. Now, where are those two lines crossing? Like, where are they crossing at? Right here, right? In this area. I have shading everything here and here, which means I only shade in that little area over there where they overlap. And once again, keep in mind that is supposed to be a dashed line there. That's supposed to be a dashed red line. So graphing this, the line x um, equals 0 is actually this axis right here. So if I was to graph that line, all I'm actually really doing is drawing a line straight down. So um, that line goes right there. And y equals 0, that line goes right here. So let's rearrange and solve this one right here, because this will be the most difficult one to solve for anyway. So to get y by itself, I'll subtract a 4x on both sides. Um, and by doing that, that means I have 3y is less than or equal to negative 24x plus, or sorry, negative 4x plus 24. To get the y by itself, since it's 3 times y, I would divide everything by 3. And I end up with y is less than or equal to negative 4 divided by 3, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. So if I go to graph that, um, what I have here is I'm going to graph this now. So that's a line straight up and down at x. And I pick a point not in the line, which is 1, 1. And if I plug it in, is 1 greater than 0? Yes, which means I shade everything in uh, the right direction. y is greater than or equal to 0. That goes in this direction, straight across, because it's a horizontal line at 0, 0. Pick another point not in the line. Well, that's 1, 1. So I plug in 1, 1. And is 1 greater than 0? You betcha. So, so far, this tells me that I would be shading everything up in this area, right? That's where those lines, the shaded areas, are crossing. So this area is where I would be shading right now. So now i got to graph um, this line here. 
and that is a positive 8, so the slope is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I put that there, and I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 3, and put a point. Then I go down 4 and over 3 and put a point. Because it's less than or equal to, I draw a solid line. I pick a point not in that line, which is 0, 0. And I plug that in, and I find out, is 0 less than 8? Well, that's true. And since 0, 0 is right here, and it's not on the green line, I shade everything in this direction. Well, where does it appear as though everything's overlapping? Well, it's overlapping in that triangular area space there. And where all three of those lines overlap is where I have to shade in, which is that little triangle piece right there. Go home. All right, so um, when I come back, I will uh, finish up here on 3.3, uh, .3, uh, which is graphing. Um, systems of inequalities. I don't want to rush this next problem. I want to make sure that you uh, completely understand it. So we'll finish up when we come back.